Okay, and I believe I have turned on the recording. So I'm going to turn it over uh, to Carolyn Zachary from California Department of Education to get us started. Carolyn. All right. Thanks, Anthony. So when I looked at this, it's a jam session. I went, oh, no, it's a mini session. Those are jam sessions are later because I was really glad I didn't have to like get an instrument out or something and and play a jam because it's been a long time since I played my clarinet. So, um, so I'm happy to be here. Unfortunately, Gary just emailed me a few minutes ago to say he's stuck in a leadership meeting. And you know how those all go, right? You plan one thing and then you get stuck. So he won't be able to join us, but I do see that uh, Myra's here. So if there's anything really related community college that I don't think I can answer, we'll throw it to Myra. We are recording, right? Yes, so we could also make a list of those questions and, uh, and Gary and I can look at them when we meet on Fridays to see what kinds of answers we, um, we can provide. So this is really about, you know, all things CAPE, but let's really focus first on your, uh, your three-year implementation plans. And I was so impressed with the keynote speaker this morning and really his, his ideas of, you know, redesigning, thinking about equity and inclusion and, and how to do that and how to re-engage um, your students and your staff. That was the other piece is the, you know, we so often think about re-engaging our students, but, you know, you had staff that were off Zooming for two years also. So re-engaging them as well. And I just wondered if anyone had some kind of aha moments from that, that's going to help you looking at your three-year plan. Anyone have anything from that? Um, if you do want to raise your hand, if you want to raise your Zoom hand so we can take those questions, or you can also put them in the chat as well. I'll monitor the chat for Carolyn. Oh, thanks, Anthony. Yeah. Any great, no, no great ahas from that? Elaine, you've come off mute. Did you want to say something? No, sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope that you'll go back and look at your notes that you might have taken from this morning or um, go back when the um, recording is available and, and uh, review that again, because I think he had so many gems. I, I couldn't write them all down. Um, I think Netta said something in there, too, about lots of gems or someone in the chat I saw um, during that session that he had so many gems. It was hard to get them all get them all written down. So, all right. So um, the re I'm looking forward to recording. Oh, yes. Great. It was a, it was an amazing session, high energy. So, all right. So what other questions do you have about three-year planning? Any questions about three-year planning? This was not meant to be a session. Or, I mean, a presentation, just so you know, this is meant to be a, a Q and A type of a type of a session. So um, I just wanted you to know that I have no slides for you. Um, I can pull out my book of jokes if I need to go there. Uh, I can you know talk about cooking. I can talk about lots of things, but I'm really here to talk about cake. So what other things do you have? Jokes. <laughs> okay, I'm really not good at jokes. I'm just going to tell you that. All right, no three-year questions. All right. Car Carolyn, sorry. Yes. Um, oh, good. There, there's a question in the chat from Eric. Um, Eric says, I am new this year. Welcome, Eric, by the way. Uh, what are the yeah. basics that we need to include in the three-year plan? Well, Eric, I hope that your three-year plan is done um, for your consortia. And then you'll be looking at that on an annual basis. But it's really looking at Kind of in general, and, and I know that Myra could rattle these off like that, and, and I may um, ask her to do that. But it's really looking at your regional consortia, looking at um, what are the needs of the adult learners within your consortia? What's the labor market look like? So how can you help adult learners move into 
jobs move into credit CTE classes. So maybe they're in some non-credit CTE or, or a uh, CTE with an adult school or ROP. How can they advance that into the credit side? How can you transition students from um, adult education programs into credit bearing courses at your community college to advance their career? And it's a lot of looking at data in your local area to develop goals for your next three year for the next three year cycle. And Myra, I am sure I forgot something from there. What what did I leave out? Hi, hi, Carolyn. Um, no, I think I think that's target um, what what you were mentioning. And I think what's critical is just, you know, coming out of the pandemic, um, just uh, and like you mentioned, the three year plans were already submitted. But I think coming out of the pandemic and really focusing on re-engaging or bringing back those students um, in the next you know, three years as you update your annual plan. So I think that would be a, a big focus. Mm -hmm. And Eric, if you wanna throw in the chat, which, con new con which consortia you're with and you're a new director, we'll make sure that um, you, know, you get a copy of your three-year plan if you don't know where to find it and all of those pieces that you might need. <laughs> Yeah, Suzanne Webb also just um, put in the chat that she's a new director, so she's actually not quite sure what to ask. <laughs> where do you okay. kind, of, kind of where do you get started with three year plan if you don't really know what it is or you're, you're not so familiar right. with it? Yeah, so if you're a new director, your state plan should be your three year plan should be done. So I would encourage you to get your your three year plan, which is actually on the Cal Adult Ed website. Under your consortia, you can find your consortia in the About Us section under the administrators, and maybe um, Anthony can drop that in the chat. Mm -hmm. But you can pull down, this would be great for new directors, you can pull down not only your current three-year plan, but your um, prior three-year plan, as well as your annual plans in between. That would give you a really great picture, an idea of where your consortia has been, and then this current three-year plan is giving you that idea of where you want to go. So I think that as a new director, that would be critical. Anthony, I've seen some chats pop, so I yes. haven't read them though. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. So question from Lori. Lori asks, what connections, if any, should we make between our consortium's three-year plan and the WIOA application? Well, I think you're going to want to, it wouldn't be bad to have your consortia's three-year plan in front of you when you're getting ready to write the narrative section for your, for WIOA and just looking at the um, different elements that are in there that you have to write to. And, you know, you can also just take that Word document, the RFA Word document, and start looking at that and start plugging that information in. And anyone on here who is going to, um, who has put in their demonstrated effectiveness, who is hoping to pass demonstrated effectiveness, I would encourage you to start looking at that Word document and you can, um, that RFA, and you can take that, it's a Word document, and you can start putting in your answers so that when we do, our, when you are notified, which way uh, the, arrow went, then um, you can, if you are going to be moving forward, then you're ready to go into that application process and you're not waiting until the last minute. Uh, but that's where your three-year plan could be useful in looking at how you can talk about what you're doing kind of within your larger region um, with that. Other questions, Anthony? Yeah, um, first a comment from Connie Pekadis. So part of our three-year plan is about making sure the transition specialists and the data staff have the training across the consortia to make sure we are reporting all of the outcomes correctly. I know that's great. So I know that um, CASAS has a lot of training and Cape Tap has a lot of training to really help with data. So thanks, Connie. And then Suzanne, um, just following up on your earlier discussion about um, going to the Caladil Ed website. So she recommends see the three-year plan in Nova. And then her co her comment was struggling to figure out the budget piece um, in parentheses for CAPE versus WIOA. 
So could you, Suzanne, could you give a little more, um, elaborate a little more on that? Maybe come off mute if you don't mind. Hi, yes. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Yes, just fine. Awesome. Okay, great. Um, so I guess what I'm struggling with is, I mean, I can look at budgeting from years past to see how funds were allocated, um, but just trying to really understand um, what should be funded under CAID versus WIOA, because all of it seems like it could apply to either place. So, um, I mean, I get aligning the budget to the annual plan that is the plan of the three-year plan, but I guess it's a budget piece too that I'm struggling with because we have a lot of money. And uh, <laughs> so what do we do? How do we spend it? And, okay. Yeah. Well, one thing you want to be careful with your WIOA dollars is related to supplanting. And um, I am more than happy to have our CDE fiscal expert here from my office, Arturo Amber is, and I was so happy to see that his, his name popped up, that he's here. And I'm gonna have him give a very brief, because um, he loves this stuff, a very brief perhaps description on how Suzanne and anyone else can make sure that things that you funded one way and then you move them another way, and then you fund them a different way and then you go back. So Arturo, can I put you on the spot to give a quick supplement supplant um, description? Absolutely. Good afternoon, everyone. And yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. So basically the supplement also plan, the, the, the provision is that you, the we all funds, which is a federal grant, should supplement or be in addition to your CAPE and local funds. So that means is that the, to allocate those funds, it's first is for supplemental services. And also you have to be checking how that cost was uh, allocated or was spent on the prior year. So supplemental also plan, you compare, how do I pay for that cost on last year compared to this year? And uh, ideally we owe our two funds can be used for new services and extra, you know, curriculum. Uh, last year, you know, just I'm throwing some examples so you have an idea where to use those funds. For instance, uh, last few years, uh, schools could use those funds to purchase computers or laptops so they can have like a loan program and things like that. But in any case, I guess the best advice that I can provide is reach out to your CDE consultant for a specific cost, because uh, in that way you can talk about the, you know, those costs and just making sure that it's uh, a good way to use the funds. So I don't know if that's, that kind of explains the, the concept, but in a way, basically uh, you will think like, what would have happened without these federal funds? And if you can pay without those federal funds, it's, you know, you have to revisit how to, you know, just making sure how you spend those funds, those dollars. And, and I would also add on that, for example, if you have always paid for ABE teachers out of WIOA, continue that practice, right? Don't switch to one year, pay them with CAPE, because then the next year when you go to pay them with WIOA, that's where you're going to have, you're going to have an issue. So really look at how it's been budgeted and Arturo is going to correct me. I knew it. Okay, Arturo, what did I get no, wrong? No, that's that. That is hundred percent correct. And the yeah, and you can justify. You can review uh, the supplement also plan in cases where the position is uh, they added responsibilities to the position because the the supplement also plan is not so much on the person, but it's on the position. And if the position, a lot of the times the position change, you add responsibilities to uh, certain positions that maybe last year you use K funding, but they were providing uh, basic uh, instruction. And this year that position add to other services such as um, extracurriculum. The person is is uh, working on developing object, you know, like objectives for your in classes for your programs or any other services. So if 
if that is the case, uh, when we do reviews and if we notice a change on funding, let's say from CAVE to WIOA, and you justify the reason for that, that's reviewed and supplanted. It's very important to have those, those uh, that documentation might be maintained for those cases. And also that is discussed between program and fiscal because uh, supplement and also plan is one of those situations that it has to be documented when it happens, not after the fact. Great, thank you so much, Arturo. And really, if you are WIOA funded and CAPE funded, if you have any additional questions, please reach out to your um, consultant at the CDE and they can certainly help you with that. So other questions, Anthony? Yeah, Carolyn, just real quick. Uh, yes. Susan just wrote a question about a manual somewhere and I'm not sure if we communicate that to the field, Carolyn, but we have a, a recording presentation on the fiscal piece for new administrator orientation on the adult education online reporting system. So we have, yes. uh, I don't know if there's a way to put that link on the chat uh, from OTAN so they can have access to those materials. Uh, it has a, a good section on supplemental plan that I think will be helpful to understand the concept. Yes. And again, and, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And again, if anything, uh, yeah, definitely reach out to UCD consultant and we'll be happy to help. And I know that Anthony can put a, a link later in the chat to our Canvas course on. Um, <laughs> there we go. Yeah, there's material. The new there administrator different. orientation where you can find everything related to WIOA. So, yep. exactly. Exactly. Um, okay. If I Point. may, thanks, Arturo. Adele, thank you for reminding everybody that I had my hand up. My hand was up, but I think Arturo kind of answered the question a little bit, but just to add a little bit to that, um, um, there were some courses that were built using CAPE funds, but then the following year, if we gain more funds from WIOA, then the next year we're putting in the funds to, from WIOA to CAPE because it was originally built for the WIOA 243. Um, so in terms of tracking um, the changes, um, I, I could go back and look at the manual later, but I, I did not know that in the past. So we've had to do a few of those where, you know, we're using CAPE, um, we use CAPE one year, but the following year, because we are, we got more WIO funds, now we are using the WIO funds. But in terms of keeping paperwork, to what extent or how it should be is my question, but I could go and look at the manual later. Yeah, thank you, absolutely. So it's uh, two things. The first thing is that for whatever reason you use CAPE last year, well, obvious reason in this case, because you didn't have uh, sufficient uh, supplemental funds or we all funds. And so the next year to justify those services have to be in addition to what you offer last year. So you have to be careful there because uh, redirecting the funds, that, not, that doesn't justify the, the use of WIOA. So on the other hand, if you, if you use K-Fund last year, but now this year uh, you, uh, you, know, you have a reduction on K-Funding, and you're going to add to whatever services you, you uh, provide last year, that is a good chance to use uh, we all funds. So making sure that it's some, it's, it's in a, even though you, you say we use K because we didn't have the funds, so the, the, thing, the thought is that, well, you have the K funds, what happened to those funds this year? So it's, it might not necessarily justify to use WIOA on the following year if nothing changed from where you pay with K funds, even though you know that year you didn't have sufficient supplemental funds. So make sure, make sure, uh, even though again you use K funds and you the reason for, for using all K funds is because you didn't have sufficient WIOA to is it doesn't justify. If you, you know, if nothing changed on UK funding or you didn't, you know, in terms of allocating those, those K funds, because uh, when we say we didn't have K funds, we mean the, the, the requirement means that you already allocated all UK funding. And so 
now you don't have sufficient funds for those services that, that you would pay with, uh, with those funds on the prior year. I don't know if that's, that was kind of confusing, but. Okay, I understood what you said, but <laughs> may I just uh, explain what I was thinking in terms of we owe our funds? So in one year, say we got uh, 200, we owe our funds, but the uh -huh. following year, because we did better in our outcomes with we owe our program, we got mm -hmm. more funds, like four, say 300 the following year, right? Mm -hmm. So now I have mm -hmm. to use up my we owe our funds. If I don't use it up, then I have to give it back. And also, I'm also uh, in increasing classes. Then okay. the previous year, the classes that were funded with CAPE are now funded with WIOVA because CAPE can be used for other funds as well. Whereas WIOVA is very restricted. That's where there are times I am, I, I have often thought this, how do we justify this? Because there are things that we can do with CAPE, which in the previous year I had no option. So I was using CAPE for that. But now that I got more WIOVA, then I could use WIOA for that program and use the CAPE funds for something else that could be used more uh, without all the restrictions. Mm -hmm. So that justification um, seems like there is, it's going to be a little bit of a tricky justific um, discussion on that. So I often wondered, how do we justify that? So Toybe, I'll, I'll kind of throw that in there too. That's kind of what we've done with for the IETs, right? So we can use the WIOA funds for the ESL teacher that is co-teaching with a CTE teacher. And then I took the extra WIOA funds to pay for that ESL teacher. And then my CAPE funds then paid for the CTE teacher. So and I think that's kind of- Yeah, thanks, Tammy. That's a really good example. And um, Toyby, you can write down Arturo's name and- I'm going to send him an email, and um, I know there's other questions that have come up in the chat, and so um, this is supposed to be mostly CAPE, but we know that we owe a, that we know that you braid your, those of you that get WIOA dollars, you're braiding your WIOA dollars with your CAPE dollars, so certainly valuable information. Uh, Anthony. Okay. Um, so speaking of WIOA, just a question, do we have an idea when we will be notified that we qualify to apply for the WIOA grant? We're hoping to have that out um, next week, if not early the following week. Okay. Um, we do have a couple of training questions. So one question from Kim, what happened to the training slash class for new consortia leads? Um, I think that's actually, the, it happened a couple of weeks ago, yeah, right? Yeah, it, it happened at the Cape Directors Summit yeah. and it was the final day there was a training for that. Yeah, so you may want to get in touch with the CAPE folks um, to see about recordings or uh, training materials. Um, from Lori, data training across consortia is crucial. Will there be any for community colleges? There are some questions regarding how classes are being coded that provide the numbers for launch board and other systems. For example, one of our uh, community colleges had a very high ASE numbers, dot, 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 which no one could explain. So I, I know I can't answer that and um, because I don't, um, not, not being seated in, in the community college data system, I'm not steeped in all of that information. Myra, is there anything or do we wanna just take that back as something we're gonna wanna look at with um, professional development further out? Yes, uh, thank you, Carolyn. And uh, thank you, Lori, for your question. Um, I guess I can just touch on um, two, two items that I'm aware of. I know that uh, we have some professional development um, that has been promoted with West Ed. They're gonna be conducting some regional trainings on the launch board. Um, and in regards to um, our AEP data that was released this year, um, that is something that uh, we are working to address. Our leadership is um, you know, working to put together um, a guidance that can uh, further address the field. So um, that guidance will be forthcoming. Um, stay tuned um, and please uh, feel free to reach out if you have additional questions. Um, and we can also collect this question and, and be able to respond. Um, uh, so yeah, thank you. Okay, yeah. and along those lines, John Werner said that Westhead will be in Visalia for one such training for those of you who are out in the Central Valley. Um, so maybe John has more information about that. Um, back to Kim's question. So actually the, the training that uh, they're talking about is the Consortia Leadership Academy. 
and I don't know about that. Carolyn, do you know? About oh, that? so um, so that's been put on hold for the moment, and um, I think we're re looking at it for next year. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, there was a question from Eileen. Will there be a work group coming together to talk about AB 1491 carryover and what the guidelines will be? Yeah, so I'll be bringing that up when I meet with Gary and we'll talk about that. But I know in the past we've um, entertained input from the field when we're looking at providing guidance out to know better how different guidance we might provide affects each of you in each of your consortia because we sit up in Sacramento, we're not on the ground with you. And so having some of that input is is valuable. So um, I'll share that out with, I'll share that with Gary. And uh, I did get some information on different ideas and thoughts that people have about where there might be some issues and concerns about how you deal with that, whether you are a um, direct funded consortia or have a fiscal agent. So those are all of the pieces we're going to have to take into consideration at the state level to provide that guidance. And our goal is to have that out in January. Okay. Um, and speaking of January, so John Warner, just follow up on that West Ed training in Visalia, January 27. Um, no registration information yet, but um, hopefully uh, that will be out soon for those of you in the Central Valley. Um, just looking to see if there are other questions, go ahead and pop them in the chat. Or if you do want to come on mic, we do officially have a couple more minutes for this mini session. There was a comment, I think, from Myrna way back when just about um, maybe just sort of thinking about, you know, they are, their, 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 Myrna's comment was about data. And I'm trying to see where that was. Um, just kind of a wondering, I'm wondering what the data is telling us. Carolyn, do you have any thoughts about yeah. data? <laughs> yeah, well, I also know that I see Jane and, and Pat on here from CASAS. And, and uh, when we shared data yesterday, Gary and I in our slide presentation, what we didn't have was we didn't have comparisons for you. And, um, but I do know from um, conversations and looking at data, are we owe a data? Um, which is certainly a subset of some of the CAPE data, we're seeing a rebound in enrollment. So we're seeing more students, um, you know, coming back. And we're also uh, seeing more uh, student surveys being completed and increased matches for social security numbers. And so I think those are all very positives and positive trends in, in, all, of our, in all of our areas. Okay. Um, a question from Dr. Holder Jackson. Would it be possible to set up a regional training for TOPS Pro and Launch Board? Do you mean like together? Because I know we do regional trainings for- Not necessarily uh, together, but if we could just okay. have those like even be separate. I know that some of our members are new. And so we're now having those data conversations. And I think it would be great to, um, and some of our, uh, staff, from what I understand, who are considered to be the data managers within some of our schools are retiring. So Ooh. now that means new people need to come on right, board and right. learn. Okay, well, so Myra, that's really good information for launch board. And I see Pat came on video um, on how TE okay. uh, pres um, sessions can happen. Um, Jay has uh, uh, delivered uh, several sessions that, that show the, the data dictionaries and the alignment and of the data dictionaries for the launch board and TE, and those are posted. But I, I do think it is a good idea to, um, for all of the, those of you that are fairly new to the consortia, that there be some sort of a refresher training that goes over the, the two data dictionaries and the definitions of what's being collected and how they're being reported. I, I think that definitely is something that we should schedule. 
Yeah, especially if there's, as, as you're saying, um, Dr. Holder Jackson, that there's going to be a lot of, that you're seeing a lot of turnover in your region that, um, you know, Myra, I'm sure is making note for some launch board trainings and, and with Pat on, you know, that we'll be making note for those CASAS TE trainings. So yeah. we'll look at how we might be able to maybe do those online to sort of expand the, the reach that we have yes. to do those. So, yeah. So thank you for bringing that up. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. And there are um, some comments in the chat from folks about some of those upcoming um, West Ed trainings, for example, fall and spring. Um, so more information to come on that. Um, John Warner just put out a comment there. We need the road show back. Um, but then he also had a question, dot, dot, dot. any news on when LaunchPort might get accurate and current data from the K-12 side of the house? All right, so again, this is LaunchBoard, and I don't, I'm not an expert on LaunchBoard, and um, so I'm going to have to pass this to Myra, and I think it's a question, or maybe even Pat, because I know that Pat and Jane at CASAS work very closely with WestEd to move our data from TE into LaunchBoard, so Pat's come on camera, I'll let you um, comment, and then see if Myra has any additional pieces on how we might um, improve our data. Uh, first of all, um, in terms of timeline, the WIO the WIOA data that's in TE is rolled up and must be submitted um, to Octa for NRS on October one. So we now have all of the TE data um, rolled up because we changed the submission date um, for those all of the K twelve adult schools and county offices of ed that are using TE, we changed um, this past year the submission date to July 15th. So it aligns with the um, WIOA submission and the CAPE submission. And so we're at this point now rolling up the CAPE data and then we'll be submitting it um, through WestEd to launch board um, I think within the next few weeks. So LaunchBoard will have all of the TE data within the next within the next two weeks. So that's you know that's where we are in terms of timeline. In terms of how the data is rolled up and how it's displayed, um, there there was a an original work group that came together. Um, several years ago to define the data elements and, def and to define how, what is the algorithms, how are we going to display the data? Um, and I still think that there are, are some issues that should be talked about. And I think that it would be good to have um, a follow-up field work group um, representing both the community colleges and the K-12 adult schools to look at um, some of the issues that still remain in terms of data definitions and how we're displaying the data. So I think it's a very good question that was raised by the field. And I, I wanna just do a couple of um, definitions for from Pat. So when Pat talks about the data had to be to Octay for NRS, that, that meant that our WIOA data had to be, we had to submit our WIOA data to the feds, just short, that's just really what that is. And because we moved that date for everyone in TE to July 15th, we're able to get that launch board, the data that we send to West Ed for launch board much earlier. And um, Pat is correct. There was a work group developed a, a, a paper called Measuring Our Success. They really outlined um, how we were going to ensure that we had valid and reliable data and I think the important piece to know about that is that yeah, CASAS, I have is that CASAS is um, CASAS really only works with adult ed in California, right? Well, they work across the nation, but in California. So they're focused on adult ed. Launch Board is also getting data from COMIS, which is for the whole community college system, of which a part of it is non-credit. So CASAS, if we say, okay, we need to collect this this way, CASAS can do that within a couple of months. 
it's really more difficult to do something like that in Comus because it's a much, it's a much larger system. And I think there has to be a way for um, Comus to then go, okay, so if it's doing a lot of those if then statements, right? If it's a non-credit student in this kind of a program, then it's gonna be this way. And so I think it's a lot harder. And so the reason we're still not quite there is because that's a bigger system um, for collecting data than CASAS is. And um, so CASAS can be nimble because their focus is smaller. So Myra, anything to add on launch board and, and some of that? Uh, no, just what I mentioned earlier, it is something that the Chancellor's Office is um, currently focused on addressing. Um, and so we will be providing some guidance. It is, um, like I said, something that we are constantly meeting um, and looking to establish meetings with um, our, our partners, um, CDE, to move uh, the data conversations forward. Great, thanks. Anything else, Anthony, because I know we're beyond time, but yeah, yeah. I yeah, can appreciate. always hang. <laughs> okay, good to know. Um, so we do have a couple more launch board questions. First one are um, adult ed impact type reports being generated based on current launch board data. And the second question is, how does the change in upload date affect colleges using MIS and launch board accuracy? So... The first one, I'm not sure which data they're referring to. So I'm going to kind of leave that one for Myra. The second one, how does it relate to accuracy? So all I can really speak to is the accuracy of the data in CASAS TE. And that relates to all WIOA subgrantees and K-12 adult schools and community colleges. That's that whole data set. and. Um, CASAS is approved by the feds for our data collection and reporting. And so we know that it's reliable and valid. I'm not sure how that interface of a community college class that is WIOA funded and they also have to report into MIS, that I can't answer. And Myra, I know that's really technical. I don't, I don't know. Are you able to answer that, or is that one to send to your Comus people? Yeah, I think um, that is a, a more in-depth technical question, and because it's very specific, um, I'll put my email in the chat. Please feel free to reach out, and then we can get to uh, the information, the accurate information. And then, do you know what they were talking about in that first in that first part of that question? The, yeah, the first question was, are, a, are adult ed impact type reports being generated based on current launch board data? Uh, no, not quite. I'm not quite sure what they're referring to. But like I said, I'll put my email in the chat box that way uh, for additional context. I know we're already past time. So for additional context, please, uh, I'll put my email. Feel free to email me and then we will be able to provide um, the accurate information. Great. Thanks, Myra. Sometimes we get into nuts and bolts and we don't know how to answer this. <laughs> Uh, Connie Peckett is, did point out that there is a Friday morning session, 1030, data strategies to explore and improve equity and impact in adult ed. Um, they might answer some of these launch board questions. So you might consider joining that session. Um, for Pat, um, Pat's still here. Yes, Pat, um, Sean asked, is providing APIs something on the roadmap for CASAS? Uh, we already currently have a few APIs. Um, I'm not sure in what context he's asking about APIs. Um, we have uh, have had conversations with several consortia regarding um, APIs, and I'm not the technical expert. All I can say is that, yes, we have the ability to do APIs. We have had some discussions, and with several consortia and and that we have actually um, in a, a several other contexts um, have created some APIs. That's that's all I can speak to. I can only speak from about 10,000 feet. Can't get into the weeds. <laughs> all right, but Pat, someone wants to know what an API is. And I can't, I know what it is, but I don't even know what the acronym stands for. It, it, an 
an API, um, instead of uploading data every night, or instead of um, from an, an attendance, uh, you know, a local agency attendance system, uploading the data every night and then downloading it, um, it's an automated process for exchanging data. That's um, the layperson. So instead of going like this, it goes like this. Correct. Right? Yeah, okay. they're very good. Thank you, Carolyn. I okay. like the visual. Yeah. All right. And John uh, Warner said it's how software programs talk to each other to exchange data. So yeah. thank you, John. <laughs> Thank you, John. Um, there was a comment um, back, sort of talking about the launch board, I think still in that kind of realm. So Kim, um, comment, Kim's comment, for those who do not use TE CASAS and are not WIOA funded who use MIS, so the data fields are important, but they have specific upload dates. And so I'm wondering how that July 15 date affects this. Was that a pat question? Sorry, I was looking at it, one in the chat. It it it, affect, it um it affects TE regarding CAPE so that we can provide to launch board almost a month earlier the TE data, but but they're um then needing the community college data in order to aggregate the two data sets. So um what we're saying, TD, TE is ready. TE will be um, providing launch board earlier than in in the past. Um, the complete TE data set for Cape to launch board. It at this point um, does not impact at all the dates that um, Wested is able to obtain the Cape data from Comus. So I think I'm looking more back at I'm looking back at Kim's question. For those who do not use TE CASAS, they're not WIOA funded. They use MIS. So the data fields are important, but they have specific upload dates. And I'm wondering how the July 15th date affects that. I don't think it doesn't affect it at all. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I don't see any other questions in the chat, although we did get a um, from Eileen, um, a second on the road show. Um, her her dream team is Gary, Carolyn, Neil, Renee, and Jay. So there is there is interest in the road show coming back. Um, perhaps post COVID, that's something that could be considered. So um, I don't see any other questions at the moment in the chat. So I think we're I think we're okay, Carolyn. Unless you have any final thoughts for folks or. No, I just appreciate you hanging out here for an extra 15 minutes or so and happy to answer the questions. I so appreciate um, the ability to put Myra on the spot and Arturo on the spot and Pat on the spot to help answer questions because, you know, it really is a team effort, all of this work. And, and that's really what you're doing in your consortia. It's a team effort, all of you working together for the adult learners within your consortia to help them strive to meet their educational goals and their career goals. So I thank all of you for the work that you do every single day um, with your consortia, with your adult schools, with your community college to help those students reach their dreams. So thank you. You're here. So, um... That is the end of uh, Cape Summit Day 2. Hope it's been a good one for everyone. Um, we will uh, see you tomorrow for Cape Summit Day 3, early in the morning. Um, otherwise, have a great afternoon. And um, like I said, we will see you tomorrow. Thank you so much, Carolyn, for um, uh, helming this uh, mini session for the field. Yeah, my pleasure. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye.